Welcome. Today we're going to take a look at the RK84 uh, Royal Kluge 84 key keyboard. Uh, does it work for an iPad or for a Mac OS user? What are the benefits of it and what are the detriments of it? So the RK84 is a, I'm going to say semi-programmable, and I'll get to that, uh, 84 key uh, hot swappable uh, mechanical keyboard, which we'll get to this. It has three different modes of connection as well. Wired uh, 2.4 gigahertz dongle and Bluetooth. We'll dig into all that. Before we do, a few ways you can support the channel, though. Number one is you can become a member. YouTube, join. There'll be a join button. You can do super thanks as well. Take one of my courses, which you can find below uh, on Skillshare. Uh, you can go to curtismichael.ca slash Skillshare to get one of my courses. That's really it. Comment, like, subscribe, all that other stuff. Let's dig into the RK84. Let's start with what's in the box. What you get in the box is a switch puller, a keycap puller. You get a few extra switches if one dies, which is actually really nice to have a few extra switches just in case. You get a terrible USB-A to USB-C, just a cheap, cheap cable. And then you get a manual, that's about it. The manual's really small, it's like eight pages. I don't know that you need more than that, um, but it does, it kind of just feels like there could be more anyways. As far as connections go, there's a few options. There is Bluetooth, it has three Bluetooth profiles. You get to that by holding function and typing W, Q, or E to pick your profile. Hold it, turns into pairing mode. Um, you can also flip the keyboard over, switch the one switch to G, and then you're going to plug in a USB-A 2.4 gigahertz dongle to your device, into a hub, into anything, and it will work fine there. And finally, you can just leave it wired. The advantage to wired is that it has a USB 2.0 hub in the keyboard if you're going wired. It's USB-C on the keyboard and two USB-A hub ports. Honestly, USB is so slow. I, I don't even see the utility of it anymore. To charge some stuff makes it easy to charge some stuff, I guess. Other than that, I just think AirDrop or syncing via iCloud is more than enough. So I just want Bluetooth, pair is fine, no latency for my uses. So once you've got the keyboard set up, uh, set up paired to your device, then the next thing you gotta do is move it into iPad or Mac mode by holding function and tapping S. And this is where my first problem is because you do that and you'd think, hey, the keyboard remember it if I power it off or run, no, it doesn't remember it. So every time you power the keyboard on, every time you switch connection type, you have to redo the function S uh, keyboard command to get it to work. So now I think that, and I said this is a semi, semi-programmable keyboard. I say semi because the truth is that it doesn't work with the Mac, the software at all, <sighs> at all. So people recommend using Carabiner Elements if you look around and what that actually does is install the driver on your Mac and then that driver intercepts the keyboard commands, changes them so that your Mac thinks it sees something else. So is it actually that useful? No, it's not that useful because that doesn't do me any good when I'm using it with my iPad. Now I did actually take the time to download Parallels, install the ARM84 version of uh, Windows, so ARM84, I feel like I'm getting that wrong, ARM64 version of Windows, so that I could program it with my M1 Mac Mini. And I looked through the thing, I updated the drivers, I updated the software, I looked through it, and you still can't program the command key by default. It does, just doesn't work. So that's why I say it's semi-programmable. If you're on Windows, totally programmable. It's fine. But otherwise, it's just not programmable. Like, it's not usefully anyways. Your best programming will actually be remapping keys in the um, settings, general settings, keyboards. You can remap keys. Um, so I have now made caps lock globe key. That's another one. There's no actual globe key, although it looks like there is from the um, Bluetooth settings. So it's hooked up via Bluetooth. It does say, hey, I have a globe key. What do you want to do with it? But I have never been able to figure out which key it thinks is the globe key. So I reprogrammed it to CAPS, which is actually a problem for me because I've been using CAPS as escape for a long time. I'm getting used to it two weeks in, three weeks in, um, to having CAPS as a globe on my um, iPad. And I think that the globe is really useful with iPad OS 15 uh, coming out or out now and all the screen, not screen sharing, screen splitting, screen control, keyboard commands, but it's still a pain in the butt. I wish you could actually fully control it from uh, like fully program it, even if it was via parallels, via Windows, even though that's super lame. Really should just have a Mac way to program it. Come on, get with the program. Why can't I program it on the Mac? If you're into RGB stuff, it's got a bunch of options. I don't actually know how many because I don't really care about RGB stuff. I leave it default. 
But the way you program it is function home cycles through the preset backlight modes, function up arrow or down arrow increases or decreases the brightness, function end switches the backlight color, function right arrow or function left arrow increases or decreases the backlight blink. I really tend not to care. I just leave it whatever. My kids come in and change it more often than anything else. I just, I don't care. But it's got backlights. If you like it fully backlit, it looks nice, I guess, if you like backlights. On the battery life front, I find that it's yeah, two, maybe three weeks with the backlight effects on, um, which is good enough for me. I know people say, oh, it has to be the longest battery life possible. But the truth is, as long as it is works when I want to, that's great. I'm also not taking this keyboard anywhere. So if it's out of battery, I just go grab a USB-C to A cable and plug it into my iPad, into the hub, and it charges and works. So I don't even see what the problem is. The biggest issue there is hitting function S to make sure it gets back into iPad or Mac mode. That's the biggest issue. Other than that, like, I don't even get why people complain about that stuff. Battery life is fine. It reports in the Bluetooth settings for your iPad. So you can have some idea of what it is. Although it doesn't show up as a keyboard, it shows up a, a generic Bluetooth symbol. Keycaps that came with were a set of white double shot ABS keycaps. So they're gonna last, right? That's actually two shots of plastic. It's not like printed on, so you're not gonna wear it off. They look nice. They have secondary legends so that you can see like what the function key does, what the home key does for your lights, stuff like that, which would have been useful because um, I switched them out basically right away. I've had this set of Mat 30 from uh, Drop for quite a while and I wanted to put them on. They are PBT with thy sublimated legends and they look really cool. So I put those on instead. And uh, they had all the keys I really needed and had a Mac set, that's the other thing. The RK84 did not come with Mac alternate keys. So this had command, this had option, this had the ones I wanted for Mac. So I got to switch them over and see what I wanted to see, which was nice. Um, the only thing is they don't have secondary legends. So I can't see that like function home is actually there to, to program the lights. So I actually had to like go back to the manual for that. My final verdict, do I like the RK84? Yeah, it's pretty good. I think that if you're a Windows user, it's a great keyboard. Like it's a great budget keyboard. I, f I like it better than my Keychron actually. I do like it better than my Keychron. I don't know why, why? Maybe it's just because I have fancy keys on it. Uh, it certainly has more programmability, more options for Windows user. For Mac users, and if you're really using it on Mac OS and you can use Caribbean or Elements to switch what you want, then by all means, it's a great keyboard. If you're going to use it with your iPad wirelessly or multi-device, it's a little more of a struggle with it there just because it's not going to uh, really program for your iPad. You just have to deal with what you got. Um, that even goes so far as the function keys when you switch it into iPad mode or Mac OS mode do not become media keys like they are typically on Mac. You still have to hold function at F8 to get it to play pause because F8 doesn't become play pause when it's in Mac mode. So that's kind of a bummer. Uh, overall, the sound, I and I like the sound of the keyboard. I find it's a little pingy as in the space bar, but that might be because I switched the keys out. So we'll finish this off with a sound typing test of this keyboard for you so that you can see here what it looks like. I don't know, so you can listen to it. If you liked the video, thumbs up below. If you loved it, subscribe, hit the bell. YouTube will let you know something happened. If you didn't like it, go find somebody else to watch. That's fine with me. Um, other ways to support the channel, take one of my courses. You'll find them linked below. Zettelcast and Tick Tick. One coming up on Obsidian. That's it. Have a good day. Try to behave yourselves.